All right, what's going on, everybody? I just want to make a quick video uh, so I can help some of you guys having problems with your pellet stoves. It's that time of year, so they're going to start acting up, you know, especially these older ones. Uh, so I want to make a quick video, maybe save you guys some money on repair costs. Um, this morning, my pellet stove wouldn't do anything, and I almost called a repairman out. So instead of doing that, I took the side panels off my stove and started looking around and I found out what the problem was and after a little bit of online research I discovered that this is probably 90% of why stoves won't do anything and it's actually pretty simple so I wanted to share with you guys uh, there's a couple things to check uh, number one first thing you want to do is clean your pipe out uh, to get any clinkers out uh, any ash buildup, anything like that, that will cause a pressure switch, which is right here, to uh, to close because it runs off a of vacuum. So what that does is it senses uh, that there's a vacuum in there, so it'll shut the uh, the switch will open up and it won't let the stove do anything if it's clogged up. It's a safety feature. Uh, another thing is. Uh, this line right here, which is like a, I don't know, like a plastic, rubbery kind of line. Uh, what you want to do is check this to see if there's any cracks in it or anything like that. Because if this leaks, this will also cause this switch to get a false reading and it will shut your stove down. Uh, my problem that I was having was all of that was fine. My pipe was clean, the line is perfectly fine but my pressure switch actually went bad. And the way to test that is to pull both wires off. So right here, there's two wires, doesn't matter which way they go on. Uh, pull both, both your connectors off and put a jumper in between them. And that will make that switch, it'll bypass it and give uh, a connection to this, these two wires so your stove will kick on and mine's running right now and that was the problem. It was just a pressure switch which is probably I don't remember what it was. It was like fifteen to twenty dollars. I have mine ordered but I'm running this jumper right now. It's okay to run it for a couple days um, as long as you know that your pipe's clean and you know there's no other problems with the stove because you know, this is a safety feature but if your pipe gets backed up it'll shut the stove off uh, that way your house doesn't get full of smoke and you know carbon monoxide is a serious thing so make sure you always have a carbon monoxide detector handy you know, somewhere around the stove so if you're in the middle of the night and something goes wrong you get a fair warning so anyway I just want to make this quick video uh, to maybe help you guys out save you a little bit of money uh, if I help one person with this video you know, it was definitely worth the time and effort to make this video. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to make some more videos to do uh, some other troubleshooting on these stoves. The reason I like them is they're so simple, they're mechanical. You know, there's only a couple things that can really go wrong with them. And you can do this yourself at home and it'll save you guys a bunch of money instead of calling a repairman out every time. So, alright, have a good day guys. Bye.